Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another piano lesson with Warren. My name is Warren McPherson. Uh, it's been a while since I've posted a video. I sort of broke my cycle of a weekly posting. Been working on my new website, and that will be up in about a week or two. So look out for that new changes. But today, I want to talk to you guys today about owning your skills. How can you accelerate your piano playing skills? You know, how can you cram six months of um, studies into, say, three months or even two months? It is possible. And this is not some form of become an advanced player scam quick thing. It's just how you approach the piano and how you step out and own your skills that will help you to accelerate. And so I've sort of compiled some steps that I have been using over the years and I realized it really helped me. So let's jump into it. The first thing, and this goes without saying, is that you have to practice, I would say at least five days a week. If you practice every day, that's even better, but at least five. And your practicing can be various length. It doesn't have to be every day you're practicing for two hours. In fact, I wouldn't recommend that because you'd get burnt out pretty quick. But today you might just practice for 15 minutes. Tomorrow it might be 20. The other day it might be 10. The other day it might be uh, an hour, you know, different times based on your schedule and based on what you have going on. But every day you want to do something that puts you one step further. So that's number one. You got to practice, if not every day, most days. Number two, you need to have a goal when you sit down to practice. You can't just sit down blank and just fumble around for 10 minutes, play whatever comes to mind, and say that's practicing. There's a difference between practicing and playing. When you just sit and you just play whatever comes to mind, that's playing. When you sit down with a goal in mind, that's practicing. And the goal can be simple. The goal can be today, I want to learn how to play my 1625 in the key of F sharp. That's it. And you spend 10, 15, 20 minutes, and you just practice that slowly. Your goal could be, I want to learn how to play the chorus of this song in this key. So you have different goal, and it's something you should really pay attention to. Think about, OK, tomorrow, you know, what, what, what do I want to practice? and you have that goal. So that's number two, have a goal in mind, something that when you get up, you can say, if I haven't achieved it, at least I am halfway there. I'm closer to achieving that goal. Always have a goal in mind when you sit to practice. Number three is you wanna break up your practice, in, your practice into what I call segments. If not, you'll sit and probably practice the same thing every day, all day, all the time. And practicing is like nutrition. You wouldn't get up every day and just feed yourself carbohydrates. Or you wouldn't get up every day and just eat proteins. You balance it out. You want your proteins, your carbs, your nuts, your grains, your vegetables. You want to treat practice the same way because there are a lot of areas of being a pianist or being a musician. You got to learn chords. You got to learn chords in all keys. You got to learn chords in all inversions. You have to learn scales. You know, you got to learn different technique and finger strengthening exercises. You have to learn repertoire and depend on the type of music you're playing, different style of music. And so, so there's a lot of elements and areas. And so you want to make sure you're touching on those areas in your practicing. So I break up my practicing in three sections. Scales, chords, and repertoire. That, those are so like the big blocks. So if you have half hour to practice, you can break up each of those in 10 minutes. In terms of scales, there are so many scales out there to learn. And eventually, you know, if you're um, one of those people that like to learn scales, you can learn all of them. But there are three basic or three most important scales that you should know. As soon as you start learning the piano, you want to start thinking about working on these scales. The first one's the major scale. That you need to know it the way you know your ABCs. Major scale, both hands in all 12 key. You got to know that. Um, you want to learn your minor scales. 
There are three forms of minor scale, and I did a video on this a few months ago. You can find it in my playlist on minor scales. There are three types of minor scales. The harmonic minor scale, the melodic minor scale, and the natural minor scale. Or I can reverse it and say the natural minor, the harmonic minor, and the melodic minor. I like to say them in that order. And uh, the harmonic, the natural minor is the relative minor of any major key. So for example, if I'm in the key of C, if I go to the relative minor, which is always a minor third down, and just play all the notes of C major, you get the A natural minor. The harmonic minor now is just raising the seventh degree of that minor scale. The melodic degree rule states that you raise the six and the seven ascending and you restore them back to their natural pitch on the descent. And so you have, then there's like the natural minor coming back down. And if you want to learn more about the minor scale, check out that video that I did. It's in my playlist. It's called The Minor Scales. So I'm not going to get too much into that. But just so you know, the minor scale, there's three forms. You want to know all three in every key. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lot to take in. The last uh, and most important one also is the blue scale. And I did a video called Everything Blues. And in that video, I covered all 12 major, uh, all 12 blues scales slowly, both left hand and right hand. Um, so if you can check that out. So the major scale, the blues scale, and the minor scale, those are the three scales. And so your first block or the first section of your practice should consist of some form of scales. Obviously, you don't want to be taking on all those three skills in one practice. So this is why we talk about setting a goal. So for today, you get up, you can say, all right, I'm going to work on my A natural minor scale. That covers the scale portion of your practice. Yeah. The second portion of the practice now is chords. Always want to be practicing chords. And so if you're a beginner, we got uh, four basic types of chords, or what we call triads. The major chord, the minor chord, the diminished chord, and the augmented chord. Those are the four basics. And so again, you get up, you could say I'm gonna practice my diminished chord in three different keys today. So you're practicing your diminished chord. The next day you get up, you can say, I'm going to practice my augmented chords. And there are different ways and different uh, patterns and techniques you can practice chords. And I'll do a tutorial on that in the near future. But just know that chord practice should be a part of your uh, uh, sections. Be sure to practice, if you do hands separately, everything you do with the left you want to do with the right, and everything you do with the right, you want to do with the left, because you don't want one hand to improve over the other. You sort of want to build them equally. So everything you do with the left, you do with the right until you can do them together. So again, the first section, practice some form of scale. The second section, practicing a chord. If you're more intermediate, getting into the advanced level, the same concept applies. You just want to make those chords extension. So instead of practicing just a triad, Start practicing your major ninths, you know, in different keys. Start practicing your major thirteens or your, your altered chords. Same concept, you're just now expounding, practicing bigger chords. And the final aspect of practicing or the, the third block in the practice should be repertoire. Repertoire are just tunes. You always need to be working on a song. And so there is a misconception that you sit and you play your scales until you get them. You learn your chords until you get them. Then you start learning songs. 
No, you don't want to do it that way. That way will actually take you a longer a time to develop your skills. You want to be practicing songs right out the gate. The type of songs you practice now is what makes a different difference. You want to practice songs at your comfort level. Find simple songs. If it's even nursery rhymes, yeah? Find simple song and start learning the chords of those songs. So again, you break up your practicing into three sections. Scales, chords, and repertoire. Have a goal for each of those sections. What is it you want to practice uh, for the first section with scale? You stick to that. What do you want to do for the second section in terms of chords? A lot of different chords to practice, a lot of different inversions. Pick one or two, stick with that. And repertoire, you do the same thing, yeah? Pick a simple song that fits in your uh, skill level and start working on it slowly. Time yourself also. Give yourself a timer. If you don't, again, you'll probably spend too much time in one section. And so by doing that every day, if you have 10 minutes, break that 10 minutes up into three different sections. And you will really start to feel some traction after a few weeks of doing that. And so that's the third thing. Again, the first thing is practicing every day. The second thing is to have a goal. And the third thing is to break up your practicing into three sections, scales, chords, and repertoire. Now, the fourth thing and final thing, and this is the game changer. This is what will really accelerate your skills. What is that? You got to put yourself out there. I know it sounds scary, but that's when things really start to accelerate for me when I was learning. And when I say put yourself out there, I'm meaning I'm talking about playing for people. Yeah, you got to throw yourself to the sharks. <laughs> you got to jump off the deep end, you know. Once you learn one song and, you, you know, you're plowing along, bring your friends in, bring your kids in, bring your spouse in, say, hey, check this out, you know. Once you get a little better, start thinking about probably doing an open mic, you know. Go at an open mic. Open mic are usually laid back and usually, you know, people who are just getting into performance or just learning uh, two new songs and that's a great I found that to be a great outlet you know you learn one song you perfect that song and you go do that rendition at an open mic you know the thing that really did it for me was church you know I started learning some hymn, some hymns by ear and one day the keyboard player for our church the main keyboard player who, who was teaching me you know the, the, the church tunes he was sick and couldn't make it and so the elders came over and he said, they say, um, you've been taking lessons. You can cover the service, right? And I was like, no, I can't. I'm not ready. And he's like, yeah, you can do it. And so they convinced me to play for the service. And man, that was the most scariest moment for me. But I got up there and I played the service. Did I make a mistake? Yep, a whole lot. I bombed the songs. You know, I, I made a lot of mistakes. But I continued I plow through sections I didn't know. I just make stuff up, play around chords. But you see, the thing is, when I, once I got through the service, I, I, I felt accomplished. Even though I made a lot of mistakes, I felt accomplished. And people came over and they shook my hand and they're like, well done, brother, well done. You know, my sister and my brother, they were there and they're like, you know, it sounded good. It wasn't as bad as you think. But that initial step gave me the courage to do it again. The second time when uh, the keyboard player came to church, he set up a second keyboard and he said, come play with me, you know? And I started ping-ponging behind him, you know, played little strings and he played the chord, you know? And that's, that's, that was the game changer for me. And then from there I start to, I became the accompanist for the youth choir. They were like, you, you go play for the youth choir. He would play for the senior mass choir. And that was it for me. I learned so much just playing and accompanying because the thing is you have to think fast you have to think on the spot if you make a mistake you can't ha get hung up on it I, you got to continue you know singing is happening you got to skip that you know you learn how to figure out chords on the spot wrong or right that was a big 
game changer for me. This, I think, is the, the biggest thing that will accelerate your playing. So yeah, you want to make sure you're practicing every day. You want to make sure that you have a goal in mind when you sit down to practice. You want to make sure you structure your practice into segments so you're practicing all the different areas of your skills. But you have to, at some point, get out of your house and go play in front of some people. You know, if you're, you know, just doing it for fun, Christmas seasons or, you know, when you're having a party at your house, sit at the piano, play something for your guests. And again, I know it's nerve wracking and you're saying I'm not ready yet, but the thing is, you'll never be ready until you put yourself out there. And the good thing is once you put yourself out there, I guarantee you, it will give you some momentum, it will really build your confidence and You'll, you'll learn skills, you'll start learning uh, additional skills that you just, you can't replicate that when you're in your room alone and you're playing. There's a certain level of pressure and anxiety when you're playing in public for people that forces you to sort of make stuff up, get through the song, keep it going, and that sort of pressure and anxiety, you're not able to recreate that when you're just playing for yourself. And so those are the tips I have for you guys today. If you do these four things, you practice regularly, you have a goal each in mind when you sit to practice, you break up your practicing into scale section, chord section, repertoire, and you start to find an outlet. I'm not saying go try to play in front of thousands of people, but if it's even two, again, I find church to be a good one. If you don't want to play in front of our Sunday, Sunday services yet, Play for Bible study, you know? Opening, you know, uh, they might do a, a few uh, worship songs, Bible study. That's a great time, you know? Not a lot of people there, it's low key. Or you can play for um, evening service. You know, something that you're playing in front of people and you sort of have to make it work. It also gives you a sense of duty and responsibility when you know that, okay, these people are counting on me to show up and play. It really forces you to learn the songs, and that's what you want, something to lit the fire. If you just sit in your home and you watch my videos, which is good, I'm glad you're watching them, keep doing that, you practice what I say, but until you leave the comfort of your home and say, I'm just gonna throw myself to the wolves, I'm gonna play at this open mic, I'm gonna play for the children's service or the youth choir or whatever, whatever outlet it can be, I'm going to play a song or two at this party. Find an outlet. There are tons of outlets. So no excuse. Find some outlet and play for some folks. And that's the key to accelerate your skills. There is no secret. You practice. When and after you practice, it's time to go forth and make music. All right, so that's what I have for you guys today. As always, my name is Warren McPherson. Thank you for watching, keep listening, keep singing, and keep practicing because this is how you improve as a musician. All right, thank you guys again for all the comments, all the positive vibes, yeah, and I'm thankful that I'm able to help so many of you to really, you know, go after your passion and your goals. It's really possible. Don't think that, you know, this skill of playing the piano is only limited to a few people. Everybody can learn how to play the piano. It takes discipline. There's no shortcut. It takes discipline and dedication, but there are ways that you can make it interesting and fun. All right? See you soon, and take care.